Hi, my name is Kurt Fiedler, and I'm going to talk to you today uh, about a new species of spider, uh, new to Guam, that we found uh, a couple years ago and um, what we know about it so far. Hang on and let me pop up my screen here. Um, my co-author on this little report uh, is Dr. Alex Kerr from the UOG Marine Lab. And um, I'm faculty in the UOG biology program um, at the university as well. First time we saw this spider was on 17 March, 2019. And I just stepped outside my front door and it was just before noon on a Sunday. And I was poking around looking for something to take pictures of with my camera. I love taking macro photos and looked at the banana spider web, which is one of our large orb weavers here in the, uh, near my yard, and found this weird looking red spider inside of that web. Um, it was odd because it was red and it had black legs and uh, it had this black structure around its uh, silk gland. It looked kind of like an hourglass. So my first think, thought was, wow, it's a widow spider, a black widow spider with inverted colors. And then I started watching it a little bit and I realized it was inside this web with other kleptoparasite spiders that normally can be found inside the webs of banana spiders. So I realized it was a, a member of the genus Argerodes, a dewdrop spider, but it was different from the three other species that we already knew from Guam. So what I did was get called up my buddy Alex and because uh, Alex has spent many years studying these spiders and their kleptoparasites and I asked him, hey man, I saw something new. Have you seen this? And he said to me, yeah, you know, I think I saw something like that down in the marine lab. Uh, so that got us moving and we started looking around all over around the places around us and uh, we found uh, them in a few places in northern Guam and at the university down by the marine lab and other places. Um, Alex had a bunch near his house. I went up there with my camera, took pictures of the mating like this here uh, and interacting with each other. And we were stunned and wondered, where did this thing come from? A few weeks later, we got in a car and drove around the island, uh, stopping wherever we could to get out the car and look in place we normally find banana spiders uh, that would have these, these kleptoparasites. And we found them all the way down to agate. Um, as we drove around Umatic and Maritzo, we didn't see so many, I don't think we saw any. Uh, but then it back up again in, in Zonia and around the university, we started seeing them again. Um, by summer and fall, we found them pretty much everywhere even at relatively isolated locations. I need to confirm their presence in the farthest south though of the island. So what are Argerodes? Well, Argerodes are in the family Theridiidae, and there are about 96 described species of Argerodes. They're mostly tropical and all are kleptoparasites and the kleptoparasites living in the large orb weavers webs. Uh, on Guam, we find them mostly on the webs of our two largest orb weaver spiders. Um, the main host spiders on Guam are the banana spider, Argiope, Apensa. And here you can see a nice big female here. The males are much duller in color. And here you can see a relatively large web she weaved. And if you use your imagination, you can imagine some of these dots are kleptoparasites. The other spider is uh, big web weaver, orb weaver is Certophora molokensis, sometimes called the tent spider. Their webs are not vertical, they tend to be horizontal and have a dome, so they look like a tent. Sometimes they're communal webs with several different uh, tent spiders together. Their parents can vary from green to red. That may be light based, that also may be age or molt cycle based. So what about our native Argerodes, our native kleptoparasites? Well, prior to the arrival of the new one, there were three known species. Uh, the first one we were calling Argerodes argentatus and two other species that have been identified as species A and B in the literature, but 
didn't actually have names. Argerodes A and Argerodes B. Let's talk about A. argentatus. And I'm not gonna use that word anymore and I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, it's found prim primarily on the banana spider webs uh, and it's the most common Argerodes on Guam, has a very silvery appearance. Uh, males are pretty tiny, one millimeter or smaller. Uh, but they can get, the females can enlarge maybe about four millimeters. And here's a male on the right, here's a female here on the left. Um, well, we found when we started looking in on our new species that this species actually has been misidentified based on the work of Yoshida and colleagues. And we are now calling it Argerodes bonadea. Argerodes species A is found primarily on Argerodes apensa webs, sometimes with the other Argerodes, uh, but often in webs that are in shaded forest understory. They're not very big. They're tiny compared to the other ones, up to two millimeters. They have a slightly greenish color, a little bit metallic. Um, again, they haven't been described and we do not know their range. Argerodes species B is in those big tent spider webs and it's the largest Argerodes maybe up to two centimeters in length. It's much more elongate than the other species. And um, it's also undescribed and it has an uncertain uh, distribution range. Uh, I think we've seen it described as the largest Argerodes. So what are the new guys, the new red guys? Well, that's a good question. Uh, when we started combing through the literature uh, we found there are two similar red Argerodes that are known in the Indo-Pacific. And um, my first guess was Argerodes flavescens. Uh, and Alex's uh, first guess was Argerodes miniaceous. And uh, turns out he was probably correct. Uh, but their distributions overlap and their general appearance is very similar. Both are unknown from their Marianas, but miniaceous has been found in Palau. And it's possibly occurring in Yap. The fee, key feature to distinguish these appears to be the cephalic process of the males. So the males have these two processes and there's one on the top more dorsal and one on the bottom. The cephalic one is the one we're talking about. The, the, uh, the clypeus, uh, the clypeal one is on, is, is on the bottom. So ma males use these appendages during mating and they apparently place them in the jaws of the females while they insert their pedipalps into a slot in the abdomen called the epigyna. And it's thought that these processes produce secretions that keep the female calm and may increase their reproductive success. Uh, here's a couple other pictures of mating here. Here you can see uh, the male with his pedipalps trying to insert them in the female and here's that process. And here it's a little hard to see, but he's got that process jammed into her mouth and he's trying to reach her, stretch his pedipalps into her epigynum. So on our red argerodes here on Guam, uh, the cephalic process looks a little bit more like a, uh, uh, a miniaceous. So these are drawings from Tanikawa et al of miniaceous and flavescence. And here's the cephalic process. Uh, here's the clypeal process. Ours looks a little bit more like that, I'd say. Um, so we think they're amineaceous, but we'd like to confirm it. So what does this all mean? What will happen now that we've got this new kleptoparasite? Well, the impact of our putative miniaceous on its congener kleptoparasites is pretty much unknown. Um, we think it co-occurs with a bonodea uh, outside of Guam and on Guam, it's, they certainly occur together quite a bit. Um, Miniaceus is much larger than bonodea and we see aggression going on and we think it could potentially outcompete it. But thus far, we haven't seen a big increase in the relative frequencies of either spider um, or a big change one way or the other but its impact on the smaller species could be larger if it occurs in the habitats where that occurs. Um, what about the impact of miniaceous on host spiders? Well, I notice they're a little more bold. Uh, they seem to get closer to the host spiders, particularly when the host spider has a big meal wrapped up in there. Um, but it's, it's likely that miniaceous also occurs with RGOP elsewhere. 
uh, Argiopia pensa is described from other places. And if it's not a pensa, it's something very similar. So it may be a bit bolder than the other Argiroides, but it's also likely that it co-evolved with the banana spiders. So where do we go from here? Well, given that miniasis is widespread, there's probably not much we can do. It was probably already widespread when we discovered it. Uh, it also may not have a big negative impact because we haven't seen any in indication of a negative impact thus far. Uh, but it will be instructive to see if their presence has any long-term consequences. So we've, uh, Alex and I have been monitoring these guys and watching them to see if they're spreading or see if they're becoming more common than the other spiders. We also still need to do molecular comparisons of all our kleptoparasite species to figure out their actual species assignments. And <laughs> that's a big thing. Uh, we started on this, but uh, we haven't gotten very far yet. Um, so uh, that's all I have to say for you. I want to acknowledge Dr. Uh, Aubrey Moore uh, for his comments on this new record. Uh, when we discussed it with him, uh, Roy Kerr, Alex's son, did some translation of Japanese material for him. And I also want to thank uh, both of our families for put up, putting up with two nerds and their uh, spider mania. Uh, thank you very much. And I will entertain questions now if you have.